Hey, it's Jeffrey Powell's Carpet Cleaning, and we are at our next vacation rental. And um, surprisingly enough, the last one that we did with the encapsulation cleaning was drying about 30 minutes. Just due to the dry nature of the October air, everything was able to evaporate extremely fast and quickly dry. So looking around here, we do not have a whole bunch of soil, and we're just going to go through with a good encapsulation cleaning using our cylindrical brush machine along with uh, a good high quality um, encapsulation solution for sanitizing and neutralizing the carpet surface so any food droppage that may have been experienced here down here on the floor and um, seeing those casters there is just a clue that I've been here several times before in the past and this here has always been here. I've never been able to figure out what that is. It, to me, it, it feels like a burn and it's been there for years. So I don't know if something hot got down there. It looks like the impression of possibly that cast iron leg sitting there, except that it's extremely hard and dark as if something hot was set there. So I don't know if if these are actually functional here or if those are just decorative. Um, it kind of looks like a cleaned out wood stove. So possibly something came out of the wood stove and got sat there by accident. Um, I have used a number of degreasers and emulsification products and it didn't touch it so I'm 100% positive that it is a burn of some sort. But the rest of the carpet in here looks really good. Other than having a bunch of uh, furniture to kind of slide around and move around, work around. Um, the chairs and stuff will probably move. You know, that table there, you know, cast iron table. It being on sliders, I'll move that. This will not be moved. We got cables and things running in behind the TV. Um, that is a no-touch object, as well as things with lamps stacked on them. But a you know, little miscellaneous stuff like this. I'll probably pick this stuff up and just move it into the other room as we're, we're going along here. So uh, feel free to watch the uh, carpet cleaning process as we go along. Pick up any ideas, hints, or tips that you might be able to use with your own cleaning process. And if you have any other questions, concerns, or whatnot that you want addressed, or, you know, just comments to make, feel free to leave them in the space below, and I will address those to the best of my ability. And don't be afraid to criticize anything that I'm doing, because just like you... You know, I learn as I go along. I've been doing this for about 15 years, 16 years, and uh, every carpet cleaning job is unique, and there are so many different variables involved that we are constantly learning as we go along every each and every single day. All right, so in part of my preparations, I went ahead and I went through and I moved things out of the way. Um, larger pieces of furniture and things I'm going to set back where they belong. But one thing to keep in mind when you're, you're cleaning vacation rentals is that I try to... The, the items that I will leave will be the smaller items and knickknacks that will be left on the... You know, they need to be placed back like um, that lamp over there. And there's some... You can see that basket of games or whatever that's in there and then like over here after I get done cleaning I will you know pull that chair back but you want to keep in mind that generally you have like women you know that, that do the cleaning and stuff in here and they're not extremely strong or very large you know sorts of people so you, you want to keep what you're moving to a minimum so that they'll be able to rearrange the room and set it up properly so, so keep that in mind with your cleaning process. It's just part of being courteous and all that sort of stuff. So, setting these chairs back, they're not going to have any problems putting the chairs back. They're not going to have any issues with moving the lamp and those knickknacks and things across in front of the fireplace, the telescope. 
and those sort of things. And then they can also put these back where they belong. I just set them up on the chair so that they're out of the way for now. So um, with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start in that back room where I, I started the, the filming. Um, when I get over here, I'm probably going to, I'm going to clean this area, give it a real good scrub, and then sort of maybe do this area first, then move back up here, and while that's drying, you know, we can be cleaning here, and when we get done here, we can kind of restage stuff by moving things back over against the wall here, so the this will be pretty much dry by then and then we can just continue cleaning with the, the rest of the, the room. So that is the cleaning process you want to take when you come up with a plan. I mean that's the first step for you guys who are watching this to get ideas for your cleaning process. Just kind of walk through, um, look at your area, your workspace, what you actually need to do to get the place clean, things that you need to move. Um, and that really help you out with the cleaning process. Don't be second guessing yourself a whole lot as you're going through. Just kind of make up a plan and stick to that plan and it will save you a lot of time and headaches as you're working along. Alright, so the first step that we take is that we go ahead and we pre-spray everything. This is our, our encapsulation solution and I, what I like using is a, a, an electric sprayer in these bottle jug, two gallon jugs, because what it allows me to do is just switch it out easily with other products without having to dump out large um, hydroforce bottles or have to have multiple expensive bottles around. These are only like seven bucks a pop and they do a, a really good job. So what I like to do, even if I have some pre-spray left over from a previous job, which we're gonna use anyways, um, I like to start out with a nice fresh mixed bottle with warm water because what that allows us to do or what it allows us to do is a little bit of a tip is that the hoses and things that I have here are pretty rigid especially when they're cold so what I like to do is just to uh, uh, come on cycle some of that pre-spray through there get it in there to kind of uh, warm up the hoses make them a little bit more pliable Plus it also it primes a pump and gets it ready to, to spray or pre-spray out. So now we're just going to go ahead and go through the room and make sure that we just adequately um, spray, get all the carpets applied with our pre-spray solution. So in the CRB unit itself, you can see that we do have the soft, uh, um, non-aggressive, you know, nylon brushes that are in there that we're going to use to scrub the carpeting. And when the, you know, when moving to like commercial carpeting or something, we do, uh, you know, change out the brushes to use something appropriate for generating agitation for whatever we're cleaning. But in the case of residential, whether it be Berber or, uh, you know, some piled carpeting, um, these nylon brushes work absolutely wonderful and that's what we're using here. Alright now, so to engage the uh, cylindrical brush machine or CRB for short, all we gotta do is step on that little lever down there in the lower left hand corner with our foot, pull down the handlebar and that engages the motor for the scrubbing agitation action to occur. So all we gotta do is come up here, let me pull this out of the way. Step on the little lever there, pull the handle down, and now we are engaged. So all we have to do is walk this around on the carpeting and just make sure that everything very thoroughly gets scrubbed in. And this helps again to break down uh, loose and dirt, obliterate and break down those sticky residues, and it also eliminates uh, offensive odors caused by animals and such. 
um, granted that you're using a proper proper uh, cleaning solution with your encapsulation. And might I suggest if you're going to add any extra pre-spray anywhere it's probably going to be the dining room is going to be your best bet because any food droppage and things this is where it's most likely going to happen um, so make sure that you cover this area not super heavy but maybe just a little bit more maybe a quarter more pre-spray than what you would normally use elsewhere just to make sure that everything gets in here real good. Make sure that you give it a real good scrub if you're doing encapsulation cleaning. If you're doing the uh, hot water extraction, make sure that you do a couple extra dry passes over it just to, to help get up as much of that nasty food debris and residue off the carpeting as possible. All right, to kind of recap, I went through, I moved uh, what I felt to be a reasonable amount of furniture. I did slide the larger pieces of furniture back to make it easier for the, the cleaning gals to restage things later on when they're going through. Gave the carpets a real good refresher using an encapsulation method of cleaning with a cylindrical brush machine or CRB. Everything looks really good. You can see I've got some casters under some of these larger pieces of furniture that have been there for years and hopefully they'll just stay there because that makes my my work a whole lot easier and plus I've got a million of those in the van anyways went through did all the bedrooms and here's a little bit of nasty here I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up but um make sure there's nothing in here stage this looks pretty well staged. I moved that chair there. Um, I think I'm just going to leave that one there because it's blocked by that cast iron and I don't want... Yeah, it's drying pretty good but I don't want cast iron on anything that's wet because that is a big potential for rust and rust is the last thing we want. Um, so, the kinds of debris that this thing pulls up out of the carpeting, like I mentioned before with the matted hair and all that nasty stuff, that was just stuck to the surface of the carpeting. And the brushes on the CRB did a really good job of picking and pulling that stuff out of there. In fact, when I go to take the brushes off and rinse the underside of the machine out, there's probably going to be more of this gunk that's going to come out. But um, that right there is kind of a visual as to this the type of nasties that um, this type of cleaning method of cleaning gets out of the carpeting and combined with hot water extraction this makes a very good uh, hybrid cleaning as well if you're doing like uh, residential pile of carpeting something of that nature plus the uh, encapsulation solutions um, they make all different types. I actually have a different type that I use for residential and a lot of times I'll just add mixed peroxide in with it because it does a really good job with helping to clean and brighten the carpeting. It reacts with urine, pulls urine out of the carpets. Um, so what that foaming action is doing, um, if you notice that when you put peroxide on urine it causes it to foam and what it's doing it is it is actually causing it to rise up out of the carpets along with some other chemical reactions that's occurring with the oxidization and all but it causes the urine to, to kind of come up and depending on how much you come up you put on there you can pull stuff out of the the backing of the carpeting as well and it kind of causes it to rise up to the surface of the carpet so it can easily be extracted um using like a subsurface tool or something um water claw whatnot but anyways, I'm extremely happy with the way this turned out. We were probably here about 45 minutes or so, plus um, the, the duration of this video, um, which was probably taxes on another 15 or 20 minutes or so. But anyways, I felt that we did a very good job in here. 
it smells much better, it feels more fresh, and it's ready for the next tenants to come in, or the next uh, renters to come in, vacationers. Have, have a nice day, God bless, and if you have any questions or comments to leave in the space below, be sure to uh, leave them there, and if you are interested in, in having a process like this um, in your own home, feel free to give me a call at 503-939-0534, and I will uh, do whatever I can, or at least uh, evaluate the situation to see if this is a valuable means of cleaning in your home. Again, God bless and have a nice day.